Welcome to the D Rock Show, a uh, motif jewels. Um, I am D Rock, and this is my husband Jorge. How are you? Hi guys, <laughs> how are you again? I'm super Hello. super excited today with my husband to be on on air with you guys to talk to you um, a little bit more about who we are as a company, as well as um, tell you guys a little bit about the different jewelry um, and educate you on the type of engagement rings that are out there for women as well as for men so um, not the engagement ring for men but the <laughs> gentleman's ring for men right Jorge <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, go ahead and um, so today I want to introduce I'm D rock um, I own uh, with my husband our business um, motif jewels you can actually find our website online or we actually have a boutique store in San Jose so whoever wants to come in and try on our stuff you guys can definitely are welcome to come in please so stand by. you're more than welcome to come on in so yeah so right. Jorge um last uh, last time on Monday I introduced myself so I want them to understand who you are so tell them a little bit about yourself all right well for those of you who don't know me um, all my family and friends that are watching just want to say hello I love you um, and he's definitely more <laughs> the heart of the company you can tell uh, thanks um, <laughs> Well, uh, let's see, I'm a little nervous, so please forgive me if I kind of mumble or stumble a little bit. Um, but pretty much, I'm just trying to convey, um, again, who I am, um, and hopefully you guys can see that, so you can kind of feel comfortable as far as like who we are as a company and what we represent. Um, my name is Jorge Roque, um, or Jorge Rock. It depends on how you want to pronounce it. Um, uh, and I'm a Hispanic Cuban American. Um, my parents are my greatest heroes. They're the ones that shaped me as far as who I am, mm -hmm. um, as well as some of my teachers and coaches and good friends along the way. But my parents have been pretty much the foundation as far as um, shaping me and my morals um my father's from cuba uh he swam two days um wow. he was pretty brave um uh i still get um amazed uh to hear the story to this day um it's a very inspirational story that has inspired me since i was a kid to really push myself and push my limits so that i can truly um, reach my full potential so when you say he swam did mm -hmm. he actually <laughs> swam from cuba all the way to miami or no, what happened no. <laughs> well, um, my father lived in Santiago. He's from Santiago, Cuba, the Oriente. Um, and he actually had to swim to Guantanamo Bay. Oh, um, wow. It's a U.S. naval base. And um, that's like another way that our Cubans have uh, left Cuba uh, mm -hmm. for America. Mm -hmm. um, such as my wife, um, I know that you know you came from vietnam as well and you mm -hmm. were a boat person so um that's very near and dear to my heart i i just really feel that when somebody starts from the bottom up um my hats just go off to them you yeah. know um and that's pretty and much then in addition to saying that your dad swam he literally swam <laughs> he didn't even go in a boat like vietnamese refugees that went on a boat like a fishing boat he and five other people four four uh, five four, total yeah. yeah five total uh -huh. so four other people mm -hmm. actually just took <laughs> off on a raft people a raft like this is crazy story this is just a piece of wood um that they would swim out to sea and hopefully the current brings them back to guantanamo bay yeah so what my father did is um Pretty much he had a good friend and um, a lot of people were starting to leave Cuba because there was a lot of changes happening um, in Cuba uh, when Fidel Castro came into power and uh, my father um, started noticing a lot of changes and he finally got um, the courage to say hey you know this this isn't for me I want a better life yeah. and um, he knew that he needed to to move to um, mm -hmm. have that possibility one of his mm -hmm. friends um, wrote a letter um, uh, well, actually, one of his friends received a letter from his older brother, mm -hmm. and in that letter, it actually laid out, you know, how he left. And um, my dad's friend was about to crumple up the letter and, and, and you know, just throw it and say, "Man, my my brother's crazy." Mm -hmm. You know, I can't believe um, that he was able to do that. Uh, my my father said, "No, no, hold on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> give give me that letter." And um, so my dad got the idea through his friend, oh. um, and my father was really comfortable and. 
in, in the ocean. Yeah. Uh, he used to swim a lot. Um, he used to fish with a harpoon. Wow. Um, so he was very comfortable in the, in, in the ocean, yeah. in the water. So um, he knew that it was a possibility. Yeah. Um, he tried to make a little makeshift boat, like mm -hmm. a little, ra you know, he tried to put, um, he said like a lawnmower engine, uh, you know, in, into one the raft so that it can help propel them out to sea, but they were unable to get that, get the engine. Yeah, but at least he, you know, he made it to America and he actually went on a raft and that's just like an amazing mm -hmm. story uh, because pretty much if you leave Cuba and you first of all you might get shot at if you leave from the government right in the 1960s but at the same time is that if the current never brought you him back to guantanamo bay then he would have just died at sea because it would push him all the way to africa so um so in addition to your mom you really have a really good relationship with your i mean in addition to your dad you have a really good relationship with your mom correct yeah um well again yeah my father he really really quickly um the thing my father instilled in me is have faith he said what got him through it was he really believed in in god and he believed in himself and his mm -hmm. ability to actually leave and be able to accomplish this mm -hmm. um so you have to have faith he would tell me mm -hmm. second of all is you have to have the courage to be able to act on that faith mm -hmm. so that's what my father instilled in me along with that story as far as my mother she is a most loving person that I know. Mm -hmm. She really is. She has a big heart. Mm -hmm. um, and she is one of the most hardest working person that mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. um, she worked at the age of eight, believe wow. it or not, at the age of eight. Um, in the, um, is that even legal in the United States I, today? I, I don't know. <laughs> today, I don't know. But I remember back then. Um, today, no. Most <laughs> likely, your kids are not working at well, eight years old. My grandmother, uh, <laughs> my mom went to stay with her grandmother in the summer. She was eight years old. Mm -hmm. And that's just something they did mm -hmm. um so she went out to the cotton fields with my uh, her grandmother mm -hmm. and um she would tell me the story of how they made an outfit for her out of a sack of a uh, flower believe oh, it or wow. not so out of a, uh, out of the cloth from a sack of flour they mm -hmm. made my mom this little outfit that she used she says that it remind it looked kind of like the little house in the prairie for any of you that know that uh famous uh, soap opera that used to play yeah. um and she went out into uh the cotton field to work with her grandmother wow. believe it or not um her grandmother was really good at um picking cotton she would say that it looked like a worm um the as far as like the um the big old bag that they would stuff the cotton in mm -hmm. and um it would just extend so as they go they keep plucking the cotton and they put it in i remember my mom telling me the story and it would just start getting bigger and bigger as you start filling it up with cotton um the reason i say this because my mom is not scared of working she's not scared to pick herself up and mm -hmm. um do whatever it takes to uh make a life for herself and her family um it really instilled uh just that ethic that uh, the morals of just working hard mm -hmm. and um still being a good person um you know so again uh my mom she's just wonderful she she's um a beautiful lady she mm -hmm. she's a loving lady and uh she just works hard she works really really hard mm -hmm. and she's worked from the you know in the fields um she comes from a military family um uh my grandfather my mother's dad was in world war ii in korea wow. along with his brother and his other brother was in germany so um you know, my mom was, you know, brought up in a military home mm -hmm. where my grandfather eventually moved from Texas to California to work at an army base. He was actually a plumber. Wow. Um, and uh, I that's, never knew that. Yeah, my grandfather was a plumber. Wow. And um, that's what brought him. But to I never knew that he actually worked for an army base. Yeah, he did. I, he I did. thought that he worked in the field. No, <laughs> no. Oh. Um, my my mom and uh, her sister, her sisters and some of her brothers were the ones that would work in the fields. Mm -hmm. That was the jobs that were available. Mm -hmm. And again, um, eventually my mom became a school secretary um, mm -hmm. so she's been in the school system yeah. since as long as I can remember uh, since before I was born actually yeah. and she used to be uh, believe it or not um, one of her younger sisters uh, teachers aide. so I remember my aunt my youngest aunt uh, would say that she used to get upset because she had to call her older sister mrs roque you know i mean mrs mrs uh mrs Del roque Leon? no mrs roque because oh, i believe she okay. was married to my dad at that yeah. time um and she would just have to uh, address her uh, you know um out of respect she yeah. couldn't just say hey sister you know um so my mom's been in the school system throughout you know my whole life and um it's really shaped who i am you know that's why 
I believe that's why I'm so comfortable around schools, mm -hmm. but also um, school is what changed my life. It mm -hmm. gave me an opportunity to um, leave my community uh, to pursue my dreams and my goals.